I love is love and not fade away. I love is love and not fade away. Hello, this is Jim from the Monopoly Project, and we're doing another one of our floating book reviews. Uh, we're here on Val Vista Lakes, and uh, it's Christmas, and you can see all the Christmas lights in the background. We're on the Monopoly Project yacht again, and as you know, every successful real estate investor has a yacht, and uh, unfortunately, again, it's the Bikini Girls Day Off, so we're just on by myself, So, but we're going to here to do a book review. So today's book is uh, Not Fade Away. It was uh, written by, in 2003 by Peter Barton, is the author. And uh, Peter is rich, um, but he's dying. And so it's not a financial book per se, but it is a, a, a book about life and what's important in life. Peter lived an extraordinary life, and uh, the last seven months was documented by his co-author, Lawrence Shames. Um, why is it called Not Fade Away? Well, it's based on, on the song by... Uh, by uh, Buddy Holly, um, Love is Love and Not Fade Away, and Peter was a musician, a, a, a pretty good musician. He played a number of instruments. He actually played with Sha Na Na before they got famous. He also uh, played with Frank, he accompanied Frank Sinatra on the piano, as uh, Peter recounts in the book, one evening long into the evening with drinks and everything. So th those are interesting stories that you can read in the book. Peter made his money by uh, buying up uh, buying up uh, uh, cable companies and conglomerating along with his boss John Malone and so he was once they had bought all these companies uh, they needed content to play on their cable companies and so what they did was they invented the concept of MTV of Home Shopping Network all of those things were from Peter his team and uh, John Malone and so that's how he made all this money so so let's go into a few quotes. There's so many uh, quotes in the book that uh, I, I can't go into all of them, but I, I just wanted to give a few of them. And my favorite on page uh, 85 is, is he says, if a problem can be solved with money, it's not a problem. And Peter uh, admits that this isn't unique to him. He didn't create that. He, he, he had heard it somewhere. Um, but it's, I, I have read that, and I, it really uh, impacted my life in, in, in not having to worry about a lot of things and in the blog post I will uh, I'll give you an exam a minor example of how we uh, had an incident with the IRS where we where this actually came in handy um, so some other quotes that he has in there is on page 31 he says the approach of death has made me realize that there are no unimportant details in life and basically he's talking about you know when you're when you're living life you you know you have the highs and the lows and you don't think about the ordinary events but when you're dying it can be, you finally understand that uh, that there are these important things um, and and that, on page 41 he talks about being rich and dying of cancer he says no one gets top-notch care unless he fights for it you know whether he's rich or not and uh, later he makes the comment that if you are rich, you don't get better care, you just get to die in a nicer room. And there's a lot of truth in that. So, so and finally on page 82, I want to make one, one other quote and leave it to you. Is Everyone seems to agree that the soul is imprisoned by the body and that only death can set it free. And so now we're veering into a philosophy, religion, and theology. So I'll leave that quote to you on what you think of it. And finally, on page uh, 98 and 99, he goes into a long discussion of, of working and spending time on work as opposed to spending time in, in the moment. And here's a few quotes from it. And he says, to be a functioning human being, you've got to be concerned about the future. And then further, he says, worrying then becomes practically the defining trait of a responsible adult. And finally, he says everything speaking about his life everything was a strategy a plan and a scheme he, and he talks about how he did all these things and Peter has a uh, wife and two children and, a, and almost a perfect life so but then he says uh, he, he says about work is work and life was then how can I put it I often felt like I was merely visiting the present dropping in for precious interludes and that's what we end up spending our time doing is uh, is working and worrying about the future 
and to thinking about the past and not not living in the present. Um, and and as a, as part of this discussion, he makes the comment um, about his work, which he greatly enjoyed. Um, he wasn't working for a salary, but he says, talking about working for a salary, he says, rather than being just a grudging exchange of time for money, and so that it's an important concept that if you spend your time, you know, working for somebody, you're basically exchanging time for money. And uh, later we'll review a book uh, by Felix Dennis who talks about how to get rich, and he actually got rich in a different fashion, but he makes the comment that having a salary, a weekly salary, a weekly check is like being on crack cocaine. You'll never get off of it. So that's uh, Felix, but uh, we'll review that book later. But um, as far as the book goes, um, I greatly uh, recommend it. It's an outstanding book. It's uh, life-changing in some ways. And so uh, this is Jim for the Monopoly Project. Merry Christmas to all. A Happy New Year to all. We thank God for the blessings that he's given us. So I leave you with love is love and not fade away. 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 Love is love and not fade away.